Um, so the agenda, we have a recenter update as our first agenda item. Yeah, Does Mac or Alan or Diana, do you want to just oh. kind of give a general overview and we can hit, make, hit, hit those bullet points at some point in the next few minutes? You don't have to hit all of them in your update, but you know, uh, it's, we've been open three weeks. How's yes. this gone? Uh, I personally have been there two of the three weeks, and I feel like uh, we have had a, uh, a good turnout of people that have come to both donate and to take things away. Uh, we're working on our tracking systems. Probably that's the most challenging, one of the more challenging aspects is to keep track of everything that comes in and then the stuff that goes out, and that is still being uh, tweaked, I guess is the word. Um, I think at this point, I, I don't know whether other folks would agree with me, I think we're taking in a little bit more than we are sending out, and so uh, that brings up the idea we were just talking about, about uh, contacting end users and having a clearance um, day, maybe on a Wednesday once a month. Um, I think Debbie's been in touch with the art garden around coming to get stuff from the art corner, the art, art room rather. Um, but I, I, you know, we, we're, we're working stuff out with the gatekeepers. That's been an, uh, has been uh, an important aspect of the smooth running of the center. And at this point, the gatekeepers are taking really kind of primary responsibility for determining uh, whether fees need to be applied and how much, and then the stuff moves over to us. And um, we aren't, in a, in a way, doing as much of that kind of uh, decision making as we thought we might have to, which this is actually is good. is good. Yeah, I think it's good. And part of, part of what we've been trying to cut down on is confusion between us and the gatekeepers so that the first week we had sometimes people were getting one message from the gatekeepers and a different message from us and going back and forth and we really want to avoid that so that we don't have frustrated customers. Um, so, um, yeah, and, you know, in our planning meetings, we talked a lot about potential problems with customers, and really, knock on wood, nothing has really happened yet that's been difficult for us to deal with, which I think has been a pleasant surprise and may change. For the three days we've been open. Yeah, three days we've been open. I'm sure we'll encounter some challenges later, but... Um, I think basically it's it's been going well. I, you know, in some ways I'm relieved that we haven't had a huge number of people out there because that means slower traffic and more complex decision making and and so forth. And uh, that really hasn't been an issue so far. So, okay. Does anyone want to add? Sure. General I, comments? I, I just for the record would say I think it's been an outstanding success. Yay. Um, <laughs> you know, really. Uh, it's been well received. Uh, we, we are already making an impact from my perspective of the amount of materials that are not ending up in those big trash canisters out there with people taking away lots and lots of stuff. Um, we are getting a little bit more in and going out, but we've got a lot in, actually. Uh, there have been a lot of donations, and uh, I, I think um, it's all been manageable. Um, I'm sort of looking ahead and thinking in my mind, well, when are the times of the years that, that things happen? Um, we might possibly expect, uh, with the end of May, a lot of people starting to move. And as people move, they're emptying their houses or apartments and they're wanting to bring stuff out and take stuff in. So it's possible the next couple of weeks could be busy. Uh, it's also the other time of the year, gets, I imagine it gets really busy, would be early September when people are, in the August, in early September, people are starting to move in and looking for stuff uh, for their new apartments or houses or whatever as they move around in this academic community. So I think we need to think of staffing in, in those times. Um, the Just to add, yeah. <coughs> Bob Doobie, a fellow who I knew from way back, who worked for the auction. Yeah. Made, a made all his summer vacations <coughs> um, or winter vacations to go to Florida by buying furniture when the schools were closing and selling it in the fall when they were open. <laughs> I mean, at a big barn, he just desks, 
bureaus, all that kind oh. of stuff. Yeah, no, no, it happened. Um, the other two things to, to note about uh, that we've been talking about, one is the parking and flow. The gatekeepers have expressed a little concern about traffic flow. Um, and we've tried a couple different things with that. One of the things that we need to do when we're planning to do is, is paint some parking lines uh, off um, to the far side uh, in a direction that would allow cars to back up and head out around the back of the gatekeeper's booth rather than where they naturally come in because when the angle that people come in they back up and that brings them around to the front of the shed which is not the way we had envisioned or would like people to exit. So that's something we're going to work on. Um, the other issue I, I think is we have learned that we need to make sure that we staff a volunteer out with the gatekeepers um, so that there's better coordination of some of the things that are coming over that are appropriate or not appropriate for us. Um, because sometimes the gatekeepers and their enthusiasm send over stuff that really perhaps shouldn't be with us. Um, finally, um, the other thing we talked about um, at our Tuesday workgroup meeting was uh, moving forward with the facility, which will involve um, clearing out um, the space where the wood is kept, getting some lights in there, and reorganizing the wood pile. And I know Mac is already starting. Yesterday was starting to work on some of that. So um, I think. Yeah, there's uh, there's two oh. sh there's two sheds out there. One is on the far left, and one is the universal waste shed that's in the lumber area. And the plan is to clear out the shed that's on the far left. They've been saving stuff for us and uh, for a year or so, and we want to get that cleared out and moved into the recenter space or outdoors if it can tolerate being outdoors. And then the stuff that's in the universal waste shed that's in the lumber area is going to be moved over to there so that then we have that second bay more or less as our territory. Can so you use the universal waste shed, you know? Once it's empty. I, think once it's empty, empty, I, yeah. I have to find out. OK. But yeah. possibly, maybe. I'm sorry, Roger had something to uh, I just had a thought on uh, maybe an informal survey for people coming. Uh, what, why they are dropping things off and mm -hmm. taking things away so we can like, get a better handle on what groups to contact and, and time of the year, things like that. Okay. Keep it open ended initially and then develop some categories. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. We've talked about having a kind of a, um, a little station outside, sort of an exit station, um, to check in with people about make sure we're kind of reporting what they're taking, and, and, and that could also be a place where we. Some people would be, I'm sure, inclined to do that. Others would probably not. But that'd be something else that could happen out there with a volunteer, ideally staffing it and chatting people up and getting them getting that kind of information. Yeah. It occurs to me that there, there are kind of two major, two two big risks with regard to inventory. Either we're going to have too much, or we're not going to have enough. So one of the things that we might think about doing is kind of researching both situations. If we have, if we don't have enough stuff, how do we beat the bushes to get more stuff? Which, and that obviously is not a problem right now, but then when we do have more stuff, so, so much stuff, how do we make sure that it's moving? And, and how do we beat the bushes to get it moving? So, and, and part of that is the alternate um, what, are we, what are we calling them? The secondary um, the end users. End users, yeah. yeah. The, um, the alternate um, end source. End source right. folks. So, so getting a um, you know a, a, a list of those understanding, we all we we kind of have it going already off our um, intake list, the 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 detailed intake list because I'm I'm listing what places take might take the items, but if we can make that even tighter to the point where, um, okay, we're on overload with quantity. Um, <clears throat> let's call these 10 places and get them out quickly, you know, so if, if right. we can, um, it's going to be something that we're going to have to, both are, are issues that we might have to deal with, so mm -hmm. let's figure out a strategy that we can implement quickly for each of them. Okay. <clears throat> let's remember that there is a seasonality, mm -hmm. so we may, you know, need to just 
plan for stocking a little bit more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And if we have that extra area out there, you know, it may mean we tarp some stuff or whatever. But it, it does go in waves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. Um, did we get, we have a little handout to give to people, and we were talking about giving that out to Barbara Black so that she could mm -hmm. give it to her community so we mm -hmm. could manage mm -hmm. that. Maybe we ought to call them reusers instead of end users. Reusers. Mm -hmm. Instead of end users. Um, and it doesn't have to be the end. Yeah, so that's something that should probably, you know, that's we should point. probably ask her to um, do sometime within the next four weeks because school is going to be out. So we need to get it out. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we got yeah. the materials that she needed. Mm -hmm. so uh, I haven't been in touch with her, okay. but. Um, that's something after hazardous that waste that we can do. Or somebody else can do. Contact Barbara Black, Black about uh, other outlets for items that we have. Mac or John, is have, that something that you would be willing to yeah, do? Yeah, I think I have sent her? Barbara some of our information about um, around when we were opening about uh -huh. stuff that we accept and what we don't accept and our hours and all that. And she had um, told me she was going to put that out to her network. You know, um, well, if we give, if, if we provide her with, I mean, can somebody, would somebody be willing to call her and say, yeah. if we provide you with um, a quarter sheet or, or you know, whatever a she wants, handout. a uh -huh. physical handout, can she um, see that it gets out to yeah, the public? Yeah, I can do public? that. <coughs> because people need, you know, need to know right. that it's available and it's a great resource of inexpensive items. Right. And I can give you that quarter sheet free yeah. actually. If you okay. <coughs> And if she wants something in specific on it, you know, that's the other th thing to talk about, Mac, is if, if she feels that it should have some message on it that is not currently there, we'd be happy to hear what she has to say and accommodate. Customize. Mm. Is there anything else about the recenter update that needs to be? Well, um, I just wanted to... Um, Let's see. So, so as far as the traffic flow is concerned, the right now what's happening is that people are um, some pe somebody actually went blue past this way without even showing their sticker. Um, people have also been blowing past this way without showing their sticker, and that that is not how things can happen. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but then also, once people, if, if people check in with the gatekeepers and are coming, they're parking like this, mm -hmm. and then uh, in this way, mm -hmm. and then to b they have to back out this way and go around this way, and it just causes this traffic mm -hmm. pattern that's right. not working. Um, some of the gatekeepers that were out there last weekend were dubious that this blue method will work. I think that if we um, put cones here, um, we've been given permission to paint the rocks so that they're a little more obvious to people. But if we have if we have people park um, this way, this is what. Um, so you have to pull in and turn right to park. Yeah. Little stuff. Uh, if we yeah. have people park this way. Yeah. Then they're going to have to. Then, then they can back out this way, and it's going to be a much easier thing to go this way. <coughs> I um, tried it so yesterday; it worked quite nicely. Did it? Yeah. So, so if we, you know, if we, if sometimes people try to go. Can you tell I'm having fun with the red here. <laughs> um, some people try to go like this too, which again causes causes mm -hmm. problems. So if we if we put something across there, and we have some exit signs. Um, channeling people this way, I think eventually they'll get the drift. And I think the first two volunteers to come yes. should park in that diagonal, because we don't in have the lines painted yet. So right. when you, if you're there first, park that way. Yeah. And then so if it gets full, move your car up the hill. <laughs> we do have permission to paint the lines. I don't know that we can have them painted professionally. I have to check into that. But we can paint some parking lines, and I do have some signs that I will put up after the hazardous waste collection mm -hmm. that will help change. We have people. arrows out there, just blank, just arrows. That I think if we place them properly, we can do it okay. well for this okay. Saturday. Anyway. So um, also, so for this Saturday, um, we have anything else to talk about? Um, David is working on the the 
staffing situation. Did you all get David sent out a list for the upcoming months of volunteer signups, and so and how is respond. that the latest, Alan? Oh, that's what he sent out. Uh, uh, okay, and, and how are we for Saturday? Uh, for this Saturday, it looks like this Saturday's fine. This is okay. fine, right? We have Diane as the ship supervisor, uh -huh. and Debbie Slavitt will be there, and Joan, Teresa, yeah, too. Michelle, and David. So, uh, uh, and but uh, weren't the um, uh, Teresa and yeah, there's, yeah. there's overlap and there's coming and going, but okay. there's enough coverage. Cool. Okay. Okay. This weekend Great. looks fine, and next weekend actually looks pretty good too. There's so no, the there's no uh, captain or whatever you call that. Diana. On the second week. Next week. Yes. This coming week I will be there. The 23rd though. For the 23rd. Um, I haven't signed up for it, but I'll probably be there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My name's on there, and I'm not in charge. Okay. What's okay. somewhat difficult about? Oh, I thought this was saying that you were going to be the shoot. <laughs> That's what it looks like, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> um, but I, the thing that's a little bit difficult and awkward is how to have a conversation with other colleagues about, okay, you take this and I'll do this. Right. You know, um, so it would be nice if we could get a more technologically advanced um, yes. system um, to sign up so that you could sort of see what's going on with everybody at once. Mm -hmm. Isn't surfing monkey sort of? Um, sort no, of there's account? stuff like sign up genius and yes, volunteer exactly. sign up and stuff like that that, that work pretty I, well. I've seen it because you can see, yeah, you can check off and you see really who's nice. checked off this and, and, they, and you can that. communicate, yeah. you can send an email to people and um, yeah. it, it works. It's we we tried, basically job description or whatever. We tried volunteer yeah, spot and mm -hmm. that didn't work well for this uh -huh. group. So mm -hmm. just I've had feedback. good luck with sign up genius and okay. then there's another one. Um, uh, for communicating amongst volunteers. Did David talk to you? He was going to call you. I haven't spoken to okay. him, no. Okay. So, well, what, so what? Well, I was just going to say, I mean, but we do we do know there's certain roles, right? So yes. we've got the shift supervisor. Yes. We've got somebody to be over with the gatekeepers. Um, we've got people who are floating, and maybe we want somebody, if we have enough people, to, to man a table check outside, out. a checkout table. Um, so, it might be raining inside. Right, so, so the, um, you right know, it, right now we, we have not had a situation where we need two people out here with the gatekeepers, but I think we should probably be prepared to send somebody out there if it gets really busy because we don't want to back up traffic. And so what what we think is going to happen, what seems to be the way to go, is that the gatekeepers are going to check in with them, find out what they have. If, if they need us to come and, and look at something, we can. Or they can have the people pull over here. We've got a big cart out there. If it's just one or two items, we take them out of the car. The, the people can just go from there to get rid of, throw away the rest of their stuff at the transfer station. If there's a lot of stuff, we can send them on into here and um, they can unload. So, so we might have a situation where we need two people here. Right now, it's not an issue. Over here, we need a, um, you know, a key intake person, a key outflow person, who's in particular watching for um, items that have had fees paid on them. And then the other people can float, help people pull things out of their cars, that kind of stuff. If uh, they're coming with both things for transfer and for the recenter, mm -hmm. it might depend on how they've loaded their car as to where they go first. Mm. Yep. So yep. We might have to have a scenario for them going to the Yep. Now, I did place. ask the, the gatekeepers on duty last weekend if we could if we could maybe take take this kind of corner over as make an unloading zone for mm -hmm. people who have both um the people who were out there did not like that idea i need okay. to talk with deb um and and the group about it and not just mm -hmm. one or two people but the pulling but over to the side of the shed is another possible unloading spot right yeah. here right yeah. yeah with since we have the cart mm -hmm. yeah could I ask what the objection was uh, it's just too much, tra too much traffic, mm -hmm. too much traffic, and they and they sit there and then they go over and look for a little while. I mean, mm -hmm. we had one guy who actually, I mean, thankfully it was really, really slow, mm -hmm. but he actually left his car here, parked, to bring something over to us, and 
looked around and came back with stuff. I mean, it was a really slow moment, so so the gatekeeper was like, oh, you know, it's not worth it, there's no cars here, I'm not gonna go after him. Mm -hmm. But he, he actually left his car just like mm -hmm. in the middle of everywhere, um, who took one thing over to us, and then, so I, I, I was doing something and I came back and there's this car just deserted there, and I said, what's up with that? And they said, oh, he took something to the recenter. Well, you know, Five minutes later or more, he comes back with with his stuff and gets his car. It wasn't an, it wasn't an issue, but it could very easily have been an issue. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got to figure this out. This I think is this be, is growing pains. You know, so this is growing pains, right? Right. So um, so we have volunteers, publicity. I did post some stuff last weekend as it came in, you know, saying it's, you know, we're, we're going to be here till 1130, you know, um, come and get it. And it got looked at a lot. A couple people actually uh, sent, you know, things, is it still available? Is it still available? So I think we can build on that. Um, but the, the key thing is getting more people to come out. And uh, truthfully, we have a lot of competition at this time of year. There's graduations, there's um, beautiful weather, there are people's gardens, there's, so it, it could be that, you know, when things, people are a little more settled and they're used to the warmer weather, um, we could have more people shopping. We didn't have as many people come to the opening because there was a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of people that were really <coughs> excited about coming and you know, a number of them weren't able to make it because they had stuff going on. One of the first visitors last weekend was the mayor mm -hmm. bringing stuff out, oh, wearing his street excellent. clothes <laughs> this time. So, um, are we set with the stickers for the gatekeepers now? Just the stickers, so, uh, the fee paid stickers. Yes. So oh, no, uh, well, no. I need to talk to Deb about yeah. that yeah. for Saturday. Um, yeah. Because just for, in case everybody doesn't know, the plan is people come up to the gatekeepers. If there's a fee to be paid, then we will take, if, if they, the gatekeepers would like, we will apply the stickers and write down how much has been paid. And that will enable us later on, when people check out, if we see those stickers, to collect them. And then we yeah. can get a, a, at least a rough estimate of how much stuff right. we have and diverted. The, the situation is and that the gatekeepers use some stickers now to keep to track what's been paid, but they don't stick them on the items. And Deb said that they had some old stickers that weren't being used that could be given to the our volunteers that they could use to actually stick on. So that's what we need to um, we need to figure out. Mm -hmm. Or even just a bunch of those small round stick, like a yeah. kind of sticker. Sorry, yeah. Peter, go ahead. Um, who said, Mike, did you send out the thing about repair? You had repair on your cafes? Somebody just said, uh, well, yeah. Oh, I did. I posted that. Yeah. There's one on Saturday, by the way, in Pittsfield. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, but <clears throat> for people who don't want to go out to Pittsfield, <laughs> uh, that actually, uh, at 6 o'clock this morning, I said, that is how we start building our clientele, mm -hmm. actually. Now we've got the summer. <clears throat> um, really emphasizing repair. <coughs> like, I, the first time I was out there was last Saturday, and I saw this set of four chairs, um, bow backs, <coughs> and one of them was broken. Um, there's a kid's chair with... Uh, uh, one of the dowels has come out. I fixed it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, merely, I think asking people to bring in things for repair is more problematic. But just going at things that are there and almost making it like every Saturday at 10 o'clock or something, we'll be fixing things because we said we should get our, our kit a repair kit together so that we would have super glue and you know all the stuff that we need um, and I think that would bring the tinkers the hobbyists the creators you know the kind of market and I do think we have to build this market it's not just every day somebody who's going to want to repair a chair you know? but there are people out there and then there are craftspeople um, and I think this is where we could get also 
an extension into um, artists doing a, a morning, you know, but so that we have a, every, as many as we can organize. I'd like to get um, Sabins to come and do a lamp repair, you know, didn't want that. Finally, if I could say, well, how about in the fall, you know, such and such a date, would you like to do a lamp repair workshop and we can have a pop-up tent or whatever. Peter, what do you, I'm sorry, what do you think about the idea of advertising it in that people bring things they want to repair and then they repair them and take them away with them again. Not that they bring us broken things that we need to repair, mm -hmm. but they take they bring something, That's, they work on it and take it away. I attended a, a workshop on this at a recent um, conference, National Cycles Conference. That's the model. Okay. We have people bring their own stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't, um, and one of the things they cautioned against was uh, telling people that you were going to fix it for them. Right. You you have experts there that guide people. They can do the hard stuff, but we're not going to guarantee we're going to fix everything. Nor can you leave it without. You know, it's it's like this is about teaching you how to do it. And a lot of <coughs> if you have a similar issue, then you need to, to watch as somebody else is getting shown how to do it. You know, and having the tools there. It's it's managing expectations of the people. Mm -hmm. Um, is really important, they right. said. That's all part of the, the repair work, uh, repair cafe. Right. Handouts and some right. information okay. they give you. That's right. There's a lot of information. The, the one comment on that <coughs> is as I think about like the chairs that were out there, and I'm thinking, okay, what will I need to you know, hold the bow back thing? And by the way, save all your inner bicycle tubes that are shot, just cut the valve off because they make great tourniquet type things for repair. Um, I have to sort of get a listing, so I think to start with anyway, if we could have an expert in a certain field, you know, like lamp repair for mm -hmm. sure, um, who, and we, I would make sure there's plenty of lamp parts, you know, already there for that, and whoever else want to bring uh, lamps that we want to disassemble, et cetera, et cetera. But then that expert can show how to do something pretty specific, you know, like glue jobs, whatever you know um, and I think that gives then we have the tools for that specific kind of a repair but by having varieties and I don't know what those would be but what we come up with so you think it would be just a demonstration not um, not a, a thing yeah. that people are doing repairs themselves only because um, you know somebody comes in with a broken plastic thing and that's a whole different thing than a broken wood thing you know it's mm -hmm. kind of Mm -hmm. I can tell you. Well, we can. I mean, I don't want to yeah, get too yeah, too right. far yeah. into this. I mean, it's certainly a topic for another conversation. Right. And it's an interesting way to raise publicity, which is why I was right. letting it go for but a little while. I just want to yes. say that, guys. I mean, you can say we've been open three weeks. We've been open three days, and this is small number <laughs> statistics for us to base what's happened so far for a first three days open. You know, and project that oh my God, we're always going to have too much stuff. Oh my God, we're never going to have enough people looking. We don't know yet, so we just need to keep an open mind and do what we can. We don't want to panic. If anybody's interested, I can just forward any of the information that the coordinator for Pittsfield mm -hmm. has sent to me. But yes, I do think that would be a, a major good publicity thing right. if we could be putting in the paper, you know, <coughs> this repair, this. Right, but we don't have that set up. It, but we should. And you're right. That's great. So we do have um, our. Uh, we will be having an intern, um, Anna Moore from uh, Northampton, raised um, young woman, is coming back for the summer from Oberlin College, and she is going to be working with us on a part to full time basis based on how many weeks she's going to be around um, and she's going to be probably starting um, late May or early June so that's going to be exciting and we hours? can um, well that she has this total number of hours for the summer that she needs to work so it's it's like full time ish for eight weeks or part time for longer. Mm -hmm. So we've got some flexibility now. It's not just she's not only going to be working on recenter stuff necessarily. So, um, but but if you have ideas for that, let me know. Um, not not here. Let me know. <laughs> some Is she working for the offline. DPW? Is she working? She's, it's for a DPW internship. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. just quick question. 
as we talked on Tuesday, um, having too many kids' bikes mm -hmm. build up, mm -hmm. could she then go and look into where ends reuses of kids' bikes? Oh, absolutely. No, that's yeah. one of the things. So, what, I mean, I met with her and I told her some, some projects, some potential projects. Mm -hmm. I talked about repair cafes. I talked about end users or building a database of that kind of... I mean, she's, she's interested in a lot of that kind of stuff. So we will get some help. I, uh, how much she's going to be directed on our activities, I have yet to uh, determine. Is there anything else we need on the recenter? I, I missed um, the minutes review, so I need to put that on the Okay. Well. Oh, I didn't put it up there. That's why. Is there anything else on recenter? Okay. So did everybody get a chance to look at the minutes? There's a copy here if you need to. Um, can we approve can, can somebody look to see if the um, if, if the attendance is accurate? Does it, was anyone not here, here or here that you know? I wasn't okay, and you're not on there, right. so you're good. I wasn't there. John was not on there. I wasn't there either. And Alan were, is on there. You were here last week. Yeah, you were here last week. Last month. It, <laughs> it was cold. We talked about a plastic bag up, no, update. No, I wasn't here. I was okay. in Boston. Okay. Uh, so Alan I, needs to go here in spirit, apparently. Your hologram was here. Yeah. Okay. So does somebody want to? How did you like the the, uh, the uh, sustainability fair? Tonight? Wait, wait. We have to approve the minutes first. I it's make okay. a motion okay. that we approve the minutes. Second. Second. With the one change. Yes. Um, approved. Anyone opposed? Okay. Minutes are passed. Yeah. Minutes Your are question passed. about you. the fair? I just want to ask, Mac, how you like the... the uh, um, it was very pleasant. It was... Uh, uh, Diana came, too, by the way, and she stopped by. And we set up a table, and we set up the trifold, and um, Deb Leiser was there with uh, a bunch of stuff about water conservation and selling composting. I would. It's the first year they've done it, um, and it was... The attendance was light, I would say. Um, so maybe it'll build over time and they'll get more people coming. But um, I mean, I didn't mind going, but it probably was not. If someone had a lot of things that they needed to do, um, and you came, right? Yeah. yeah, that's right. You came. You saw. So, but I mean, they had some. They had you know, pedal people were there, that's and right. various other groups were there. Um, yeah, I think I think it was a nicely done thing. Again, it was just kind of a light turnout. Can you just ask which fair? It was down at uh, the Nonatuck Community School where we got stuff yeah, for the yeah. toy swap and it was a ward. So I'm a little confused no. if it was four or I five. Think, no, but that's what do you call it? Well, in this it says this it ward says four. ward three and then a ward four too. You're talking about the ward four sustainability fair, fair right? on Saturday. Um, but I think it might be Ward 5, in fact, because it's yeah. Bay State, right? Yeah, I think What's that's right. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think it's Ward 4. So does that mean that we need to make an adjustment to the minutes? If we care. Uh, yes, we probably we, should. Uh, uh, Matt, can you look at the minutes and see which ward was supposed to be which? The bottom, yeah, the, yeah, I on see the bottom it. of it page it. 1. There are two references. Okay. Right, on the bottom of page 1, it says Ward 4 is having sustainability right. fair. Right, and, and the Ward 3 one is correct. I did make a presentation to Ward 3. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Ward Five down there. Yeah, that's good. All right. Isn't that where the Glendale is? Isn't Glendale in Five? I don't know. I think that's Seven. Seven. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. All right. So event coordinator update. <coughs> the garden. Oh, that's John. Yeah. Um, I, the update for the garden pots is it's come and gone. Uh, I think the pot. Uh, collection and distribution was lovely. It was uh, it's a great event along with the SOS plant sale. I mean, thousands of pots come and go. It's uh, it's amazing. Um, in the end, we had a bunch that were recycled. Um, plastic. It'd be nice. Uh, uh, Peter brought a bunch and brought down to the recenter. We had more we could have brought to the recenter, but it just felt like you know this endless the number of right. pots is endless. So <coughs> at some point, you have to say enough. <laughs> we just recycled them. Um, most of them were small. Though. Most of them are small. The, the big ones go very quickly. They yeah. come and they go within minutes. So uh, it's really a nice event. Uh, we did hand out a couple of hundred flyers for the recenter. Yeah. People were very appreciative of that, especially people from out of town, because the SOS plant sale takes a lot of people from the, the area. 
would explain that you can go to this thing if you're out of town. So that was helpful. Um, and we got a couple of volunteers, um, one of whom I think is really interested in being more involved. So um, that was good. Yeah. Do, do growers ever take the reuse? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the planters come in. In fact, they would like it if we could come a week early and do it so they could have it for the gardens for the plant sale. And uh -huh. I said, that just doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, in theory, it would be great, but it's nice that we're there but when we're, everyone else is there. But when we have a truckload at the end, I mean, we, Peter brought over all this pile of it. Yeah. And the question is, do we put it in bulky plastic or can we distribute it to an end user grower? Well, I can tell you they take them and have the garden center. Mm -hmm. One year I brought several right. stacks of them. Yeah. But what one of the things we should look into is what does Hadley Garden Center do when they get too many, yeah, and if they go. are throwing them away, we need to sure. we need to work on that. Yeah. I mean, we're yeah. talking about a lot of pots, and they're mostly mm -hmm. very little ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they're just thousands. <clears throat> if we can have, uh, you know, in part of our sculpture garden is gardening supplies like mm -hmm. pots, mm -hmm. which. If there's too many, then we put them in the bulky out there. But that would be another draw, and for especially small growers and small, not like big Hadley garden. I mean, they can afford for, to stimulate somebody who's wanting to at least get their ha their house plant into something bigger for the next, you know, winter. Okay. Um, and, and in addition, we also collected pellet bags, and I don't think that went as well. Mm -hmm. um, we did it last year. I think we did it with the styrofoam and the bulky rigid plastic, and that mm -hmm. makes more sense because I think I don't think anyone came with just pellet bags. I think gardeners came, and if they had pellet bags, they brought them. So mm -hmm. I mean, we got a bunch, but not as many. We could try to collect them in June. Uh, the reason why we decided to do it in May is because we thought the earlier the better. The you know the closer to the end of heating season, the better. Uh, we could certainly give it another shot in May if you want. You mean in June? I, in I, June I don't know. Yeah. At this point, it, it, to do that also, I don't know. It's not listed on it, the flyers. It's, it's well, it's it. not, but it's only it's only been sent out as like a mass yeah. uh, press release for all of our events, mm -hmm. and it's pretty basic, you know. So we will send out a new press release okay. for that event only. We will be making. Um, you know, postings for uh, Facebook and stuff for that one only. So mm -hmm. we could certainly add it without a whole lot of ado. Okay. But so think about it. Okay. And, and uh, we didn't need a dumpster for the pellet bags. I need to say that somebody, I don't know whether it was John or somebody else, made some hilarious signs that said free pot with a very small S in parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> it got people's attention. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was inspired. Well, thanks. So, so it went well, so, and then yeah, and then June. June, the big issue is well, we need volunteers mm -hmm. um, and publicity. But the big issue for me is training volunteers to accept or not accept plastics. And mm -hmm. I felt really incapable last year, and we it was, it was a mess at the end because we really didn't know what we could take and what we couldn't. There's so many variables. David says he seems to, he's the best at it, but he says even he doesn't always know. Well, yeah. I sent you the flyers, right? With all the list of things. With the list and pictures? Yeah, or it's amazing what shows up and... Right, well, yeah. no, they're, um, the Murph officially, we had been a pilot community for their bulky waste, a bulky rigid plastic, and they have now opened it up to any community. And so they essentially took from the two communities that had been doing it, us and South Hadley, and have created a flyer based on that. And it's, it's not a whole lot more information than we've already had, but there is an official flyer from the MRF. This is the kind of stuff we take and won't take. And it's the same, it's the same information that we've been operating from. So, so the, you know, it's not black and white. It's not black and white. Um, there, there, are, there are some black and white things, like no PVC pipe, no garden hoses, nothing soft and squishy. Um, yeah. But, uh, but there's stuff that's got some plastic, some metal, some mm -hmm. you know, other yeah. things. And it's like, can you take those? Yeah. You know. So here's, a, here's something that we can do. Uh, John, if, if you have specific memories of things mm -hmm. that were tough, yeah. We can try to make it a, a, either a phone date or a, a, a go down there and talk to the people mm -hmm. and find out, you know, because 
at this point, we're more experienced at this mm -hmm. than 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 most than all communities other than South Hadley. Mm -hmm. So if we have questions, we should talk to South Hadley, and then because we're we're the ones that are going to drive the information flow because we're we're the ones that okay. know what kind of weird stuff people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. On that uh, bulky rigid plastic event, we now have another option for some of that stuff at the end of the day. If, mm -hmm. So we should think about a, a way to transport if instead of throwing all that good stuff in the dumpster. Cause also, we can put bulky rigid plastic stuff outside now at the reuse center on that in that side area. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if there's particularly good stuff, if we could get maybe mm -hmm. Some David or Star mm -hmm. or you with one with the van to bring mm -hmm. us over a load of stuff, <coughs> you know, later in the morning mm -hmm. um, that day we could. Uh, you know, we don't want to get a ton of it, but we. Uh, but on the other hand, if we we don't get rid of it, we've got the bulky rigid dumpster out there too, to throw it into. So. So it was it was going into a dumpster, yeah, not into a. Well, it is going to still well, go into a dumpster. But but we but, no, but the, the no. really the no everything will go into the dumpster f to be recycled but ah. but if there's really prime stuff that that we know somebody would want that just ha didn't happen to get taken yeah. we can take that to the recent. Well, th there's that so that makes that's really helpful because we did throw stuff out that was lovely but had nowhere to go with it so mm -hmm. that would be good mm -hmm. but we didn't accept some things that I'm not sure we could have or we t we accepted some things because we thought it would go but we're not sure that we could recycle it. Mm -hmm. So then we're stuck with it at the end. And that's, again, a recenter question, maybe, is that mm -hmm. you can take it, and or we can take it for that, and then decide as, later. As long as we're willing to transport yeah. stuff to the recenter, that's something that we can do. You, I mean, you want to think about precedence. If we start doing that, and it becomes lots of people bringing stuff for the recenter to that event, is that yeah. something that we want to get into the business of doing? Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. And Susan, I, I, the only thing I've gotten from you is older stuff. I didn't get anything recent about what the You Merck, didn't get the stuff from the... the Merck? Nothing recently. Uh, I, this is from last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I have, I have a couple new things, okay. but it's pretty much the same information in a different okay. well, format. Okay. So but I'll send it to you. Maybe there'll be something enlightening. Maybe. It sounds like as a committee we're, we're becoming the input center and that we need to know how to filter everything out to where it's supposed to go as a general big picture where what's supposed to go? well mean? people bring stuff to us they don't want to throw away mm -hmm. where's it go mm -hmm. but and how do we get it to where we want it to go you know, well, so we've got a recenter we've got these things going on how do we coordinate them we're doing that mm -hmm. i'm just saying it just seems like we're, it'd be nice to think of areas that uh that are, that are not working right now or well, that's, not you, working that's, not that's working. definitely an area of focus and that's mm -hmm. what we've worked on with our list and it's one of the mm -hmm. things that the intern can help with so right. it's it's definitely um, I think <coughs> between max list of potential end users and our list uh, you know I think we're a good way we just haven't had the resources to focus on uh, fleshing that out more. Mm -hmm. I, th I think as a redistribution center, mm -hmm. that really is a building process. The WISH project in Low <coughs> had 60 different agencies that they were feeding, mm -hmm. the stuff that they were taking in. So, you know, especially as we get a real web presence, I think that, mm -hmm. that can be built, literally. Do you want to say anything <coughs> about household health care waste? For a new business, are we? Are we, are we I think we're done with new business. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't have. I, I mean, we're doing event coordinators. We we still, as far as I know, December is toy swap is still not finalized. Thank you for bringing that up. We do not have a, an event coordinator for the toy swap in December. You. Was well, you said you would do it, and then you tried to drag me into it. <laughs> well, I said he, he'll probably be there anyway. So, <laughs> so yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So you're you're happy to Here. do that. Yes. Right. Okay. And do we have a date for that? Yeah. 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 December fifth. Whatever. Okay. Whatever date right. is. And where? Um, oh, where was the question? It's. 
think that was it's at Smith Vogue, but it's not. Um, I don't remember the date offhand. I'm sorry. I have December fifth. Um, well, it's either the December fifth or December twelfth. Um, yeah, that's what I. I don't remember. Because one of them is once again meeting up against the Lions Club. According to this, it was December 12th. December yes. 12th. Oh, good. Oh, okay. So, um, thank you for bringing that up, John. Okay. So, the piece of uh, new business that I had that I wanted to tell you all about, and it's funny because at first I was like, hey, that's our idea. And then I thought, this is fabulous because it means we're spreading the word and people are starting to take our ideas and run with them. The Gazette is having a big community tag sale in their parking lot. And they are charging $30 for a space and $50 for two spaces. Um, you can bring your own table or rent an eight-foot table for an additional fee of $10. They're going to have Bart's ice cream there, and uh, the Wheelhouse Farm truck is going to be there. And reserve your space by Monday, June 1st. So. I'm really tickled because we didn't necessarily want to be in the tag sale business long term anyway. So if 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 this kind of stuff is if we just wanted it, it's it's from it was my understanding we just wanted this to be an option for people to make it easy mm -hmm. for them to reuse their stuff or get their stuff reused, mm -hmm. and um, it's happening. So that's a really good thing. Thirty bucks is the high end of things. I've just said. Yeah, but you know what? You're a you're a professional. Mm -hmm. For somebody who has a has an apartment full of stuff or a house full of stuff, and there it's a one time deal, mm -hmm. that might not. It might be. I mean, think about it. You're not having to do it out in front of your house, which causes traffic problems or landlord problems or or privacy problems. Y you know, if if they're doing all the all the advertising, then they're it, trust me, it's probably going to be advertised better than ours have been. Um, so for the for the one for person that might be fine, mm -hmm. maybe or they could be pricing themselves out. But at any in either case, it's they'll, it's they'll a beautiful get dealers. thing. They'll, they will get dealers for that price. So then yeah. then why is it high end? Um, it, it you think they're only going to get dealers? Mostly, it did, mm -hmm. it's not serving who we served, which was the exactly who you said the apartment dweller who had, you know the middle. But don't <coughs> you think the apartment dweller is going to bite for this? No. That's, well, no. we'll see. Time will what do they charge you to have the flea market? 25 bucks for 25. a huge space. Yeah. Um, I was noticing on our schedule also we have uh, September 12th, the recenter event. Uh, yes. Is there a way to incorporate some sort of festival like uh, experience at the recenter? Sounds great. Yeah. Um, I, well, having it open to the public might be problematic, but we can certainly, I mean, that's something we can figure out. That was a, a Diana had kind of taken the, um, uh, taken the um, role, lead role on making something happen. And right. so we don't know what that is yet. Oh, sure. Hopefully we'll have it could be a repair. We could do some repair stuff, but, you know, um, if we plan ahead and, you know, ice cream or popcorn or, or music or mm. something to liven it up, mm -hmm. and particularly as people That's are getting good. their apartments together and uh, do a little extra publicity mm -hmm. about uh, that mm -hmm. and whether we want to store up some furniture particularly for that weekend. Um, you are my co-chair. <laughs> so to speak. Okay. We're in there. Yeah. It would be a good occasion to have maybe a mini repair cafe. Yeah, That's or a demonstration. Or demonstrations right. or, yeah. or something that we could publicize. Publicity. Yeah. The only challenge the challenge with it is weather because yeah. 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 our space is really full right yeah. now. Well, and we if we're a tent or something. Yeah, we would need a tent or something yeah. along those lines in case there was bad weather. Yeah, I can get us a tent. Big one? Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, she makes things happen. <laughs> <laughs> she knows people. Okay, um, any other new business? <laughs> Uh, just uh, as before, uh, just uh, anybody, you know, because one year we'll get the uh, repair cafes, the whole big thing going again, and I have a ton of information from the organizer in Pittsfield if anybody wants it. Just mm -hmm. let me know. Mm -hmm. Do you want to lead that? Sure. Lead that movement? 
Yeah. Okay. Waiting. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you waiting for? What the recenter. The recenter was kind of, you know, yeah. front So you, you want so that? You want to use the space to have the cafe happen, or mm. what do you want? What that, do you need? It's hard to say uh, because of depends on what you're repairing, mm -hmm. because you need electricity, mm -hmm. for example, and maybe heat. It's a cold day, so you, you basically look for a space that fits what you need and try to get there on a regular basis. And uh, so we could have like limited ones there, furniture repair or something along so we can get a power line out to it. Can, nice can day, yeah. you have any concept of how many how many people attend the Pittsfield repair workshop? They they have all the numbers. We can get the numbers. I mean, it's just a huge crowds or just a few well, I went last I went last April and they said it was a low turnout and it was probably uh, for the time I was there there must have been forty or fifty people going well, there. Whoa. And then there were I think they had about fifteen or sixteen volunteers. And, you know, and they said that was a whole turnout. Mm -hmm. so. Another thing that would be, that while we're talking visionary um, ideas for the future, one of the things that came up during our, during the presentation that I attended at the conference, mm -hmm. was that the quality of merchandise has gone down so much. Mm -hmm. People are making uh, making things with plastic parts. Uh, Walmart, for instance, will have an identical vacuum cleaner to uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or Target, except the pieces inside, some of the parts will be plastic instead. So when you look at um, the Dirt Devil, a little Dirt Devil, there are probably like six different models of Dirt Devil, and they're all the same size, they're different colors, and they're different model numbers. And part of what it is is that the Walmart is such a buying force that they can say, we want a big order of dirt devils, but we don't want to have to pay more than ten dollars a unit. So you guys got to figure out how to make them ten dollars a unit for us. And so then they start using plastic parts when instead of metal parts or rubber parts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they um, they tend to break more easily. So there's a whole kind of public education piece around buying reuse buying quality stuff that can be repaired and and what came up during this conversation was that there was a sunbeam toaster that they sold in, late until the eight 1980s or something that you can repair yourself mm -hmm. and the guy said if you see one of those at a yard sale you buy it he mm -hmm. said they are the most fabulous things in the entire world they stopped making them in the 80s so if we could create a a, a source of, of these are great things to buy that are repairable you know it's just an idea for the future I just think it, you know if, if you if we had even if we started with three things on the list um, th that are recommended by Sabin or recommended by whoever as as good quality things that can be repaired you know people some people might be willing to do that if they're may if they're having to buy a bicycle we're talking Peter went to Walmart, um, he said he usually doesn't go. Um, <laughs> well, didn't, that, didn't you say that? Or that was somebody else who said that I went to Walmart. Everyone usually you know, says, well, I usually don't go to go Walmart, but, um, and <laughs> they, um, but he said that children's bicycles are $30. Well, $29.99. $29.99. So when you have a kid who wants a bike, Aren't you going to want to buy him a brand new sparkling bike for your kid who deserves the best? Many people will. And if they can get it for $30, that's what they're going to do, even though it might break down or rust sh briefly. However, if we, you know, um, th that might be a bad example, but that's what we're fighting against. So if we can have, you know, bicycle brands that are easiest to fix, you know, I mean, just to have a couple categories and list some things to help promote the concept of investing in something that's repairable. That's a, that's one of my personal kind of things that I think need to happen in the world. <laughs> I see it now. It's a national magazine. It's called Reuses Reports. <laughs> there you go. So and it's also and it's available And it's a question of interviewing reports. people who do the repairs. You know, you interview bike people. You interview... Huh? I just want to go back to what the minute should say for Roger, I mean, what's the new business actually 
Is there anything to write? Nothing, nothing specific. Roger, oh, volunteer the other thing to leave the charge. Yes. Leave the, uh, okay. but the repair cafe. Okay. 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 okay, nothing specific. There's also okay. a small upfront cost to get their information packet from the, the repair cafe. Small people. being what? Uh, I think it's like uh, $47 or something yeah. like Can that. Can we come over that? Probably. Okay. There, there are two, I was told there are two main uh, organizations that are okay. leading this repair drive. One is repair a repair cafe, and there's another one. I, I have some information I can okay. share as well. I have a quick question about: Would it be better for us to think about organizing that somewhere besides the recenter because of the sticker issue, or should we right. open it only to members of the recenter? A repair type event? Yeah. We can worry about that one. Yeah. Okay. It's just a thought. It. Yeah, it depends on yeah. if we have it only open to the repair uh, to the recenter people. We would probably need to have it out there. Right. Is that something that we can do or want to do? How big is the tent that we could get? I'm not sure. I, I just was thinking. I, I <laughs> and can't what color is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm asking for. I'm thinking about asking for a donation from a rental place, and, uh -huh. and that's a possibility sometimes. Mm -hmm. And renting. I mean, that's another thing that we can promote going forward. Mm -hmm. Renting is is re is using. It's like a library. Mm -hmm. You know, some of those places. I posted something on Facebook. There's a, a library somewhere who is um, loaning telescopes. Mm -hmm. They have a telescope that they can want now. I guess they have a vision. You're Mr. Punder for oh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, um, it's from last time. Yeah, um, John's reminding me that we need to figure out who's going to lead the meeting and take notes next week. And the date. Okay. So we're probably looking at June 12th or June 11th 19th? 11th is Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry, 11th. Yeah, 11th. We're here. Yeah, so June 11th? I probably won't be here. We sometimes do the third Thursday. I'm good for my account, but... Well, well, um... Do we change that? Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Do we, do we find, pick a date, or do we figure out who's leading going forward? First. No one's leaving this room until we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, If I'm here, I'm happy to okay. notes. So let's make it the 18th. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then we need somebody to lead. So yeah. David's term is officially up. Okay. Did he express willingness to do it going forward I, I, it's I really think not I heard, hard I think I heard him say that a few meetings ago yeah. right but it's really not, I mean it's really very it's, it's just a matter of of facilitating the meeting and, and getting with me a couple weeks before or a week before about the agenda so um, it, it's a Keep an eye on the clock and the agenda. That's, That's all you right. Got to do. I believe David said he would do it too. Well, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking for I'm looking for other volunteers. Um, yeah. Have a fun Is one. it are, are we that are we that onerous that that nobody is willing to take that one on? It's just that I never know if I'm gonna have to work. That's I my see. Bigger problem. Okay. But, uh, I can okay. I can volunteer, but then I'd have to have the back. Okay. I'll be your back. You want to take it? I'll back sure. you. All right. Which okay, date is excellent. Excellent. Uh, 18th Either, okay? so far is fine. 18th okay? Yeah. So Roger is our new... Thursday of the month is what we used to do. Are we okay with that? Rotating chair. Okay. And Diana backup. And you're okay to do notes? If it's the 18th, yeah. John notes. And we're looking for May 18th. June. June. June 18th. Oops, thank you. June 18th. Excellent. Do we have a handle on the paint source for the stripes? We don't know. We don't even know how we're going to do it yet. Do you have a paint source? I no. I don't okay. Know, maybe yeah, we're not about, sure if we're going to do it with a spray can or or we can ask the highway department to do it. I have to talk to Ned about that, and you can talk to Ned about that too. I was thinking of that. <laughs> Bring out some chalk. Maybe some they low have, they bumpers. Used to have at least low low bumpers, low bumpers so uh -huh. they kind of angle them in. Right. I mean, I mean, if we could have the highway department do it, it's yeah. it's it takes their time, but they've got a system they could do it, and it would be fabulous. Mm -hmm. If 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 we can't do that because they're too busy, this is a busy time of year for them. 
Then we need to go to plan B. Which it would probably be nice be if they could sweep it first before they paint too. There's a lot yeah. of sand. Well, out we there. can mm -hmm. we can sweep. Well, I think it should be blown. Whatever. To get the yeah, particles. Whatever. Yeah. Oh. Can mm -hmm. you bring the blower out? Or a vacuum. Blower. Here is a blower. Blow. Bring a sweep a uh, shop back too. Hmm. You can do a shop back too. With, with a long, long cord. cord. With mm. that. With a long cord. Yes. With <laughs> an awful long cord on that. Yeah. Then never mind. Does so, Holly Oak ever have white paint? It's hit or miss. I mean, and it's just, it's latex paint. I mean, I, if it, you know, I don't know whether, I think, I, I actually spilled some latex paint on some pavement once, and I know it by Foster Farrar, because <laughs> I had my bicycle, and it got unbalanced in a paint. And, and that paint stain is still there <laughs> after several years, so I think I can work. It, say that latex You paint, left your mark yeah, in more it, ways than one. It, uh, it persists. Ordinary latex paint ain't bad for that. So. Are we ready to adjourn? I think we should adjourn. Second? Yes. Second.